Today we're going to find out the truth about Doc Martens. Well, according to the channel Future Proof, I really like Future Proof and um, I like what they're doing over there. So for what I've seen, they're mostly doing like product documentary style type of stuff or what they do is they'll go deep dive into products. For example, today they're done Doc Martens. It's been a couple weeks now, but I'm just going to see what they say. This is not to critique them or anything. I feel like Doc Martens, the history and the rise and the fall of Doc Martens is a lot for someone to know because I feel like some of the things that they've done is kind of patchy and a lot of things are unknown or is very vague. I know like they have a team over there and they've done a lot of research. I want to see exactly what they say. See if I agree with certain things. See if I don't. This is not to like critique their videos. This is maybe to enlighten me. So let's get into it. There's hardly a boot as famous as Doc Martens. Doc Martens stand as a symbol for the punk and anti-establishment movements that they were a part of. And they were also just known for being really good boots. But today, the legendary leather combat boots are now seen on the feet of fashion icons and even do collabs with Hello Kitty. And at the same time, there has been a downfall in quality that even the most loyal of wearers have admitted. This is the rise and the fall of Doc Martens. Today's video is made possible by our Patreon supporters. If you want to know more about how you can help support the work that we do on this channel, consider checking that out down in the link in the description. Now, in the world of fashion, few icons have endured as well as Doc Martens. As a legendary boot rooted in individuality and punk culture, they have left their mark on generations of people. And today, these boots have become a part of social culture in a very different way. And the story of how they got from where they came from to now is wild. All right, so most of you, I would guess, associate Doc Martens with the UK, right? But the brand was actually started by a Nazi. Yeah, that is right. <laughs> Our story begins with Klaus Martens, a Nazi military officer who got into a skiing accident. So, I mean, it's true, the Nazi thing, or I don't think I should say that on YouTube. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Some people, they take it very to heart, or I don't know. I don't know how to say it, but I just feel like even Nike, Adidas, so it's like... I, it just makes it very hard, but I understand... And I like how he's going all the way back to the history where it originally started. I want to see the evolution of Doc Martens because I kind of have a different evolution. Has Doc Martens fallen off or are they still relevant or what is it? Is it just for fun now? Apparently and sought more comfortable footwear than the clunky combat boots that he was used to wearing. His solution was a revolutionary design, a boot with a soft leather shell and a more flexible sole, which he assembled using materials salvaged from abandoned cobbler's workshops and old army tires. Klaus then showed this product to a university friend and mechanical engineer, Dr. Herbert Funk, great last name. And by 1947, together they went to market with the very first ever iteration of Doc Martens. But these guys were still in Germany. And as we know, these boots are not associated with German culture typically. See, in 1947, post-war Germany was not exactly a place full of people looking to pick up a nice pair of locally made boots. The duo realized that they needed to expand their market, go somewhere else where there was a younger demographic maybe, or one that was more affluent. The UK was where they found home. With the help of a local shoe distributor in the UK, the iconic 1960s airwear yellow lined blood red leather boot was made in England, of course. All right, yeah. Gorgeous. Now, funny enough, initially, these boots were marketed as steel-toed $2 work boots that will not hurt your feet and last for decades. But see, at this time, the... Man, imagine work boots being $2. <sighs> that would be the time. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. I like how he's going along with it. I like their storytelling. You can literally tell, like, there's a team behind this and, uh... Yeah, UK let's continue. had changed. It was in a moment of real flux, and these shoes... Basically, on pure that luck, hairstyle. became a cultural icon of those times. You gotta understand, the UK was locked into Beatlemania. There was these newfound freedoms. A counterculture movement was brewing, driven by a desire for self-expression and a challenge towards those established norms. The rebellious spirit of the youth at this time found a perfect ally in the sturdy, no-nonsense Doc Martin boots. With a good pair of docks, young people could literally stomp their mark on the world, be it in the streets of London or during the counterculture's iconic gatherings like Woodstock. As punk culture grew, This literally reminds me of, remember when Tyler, the creator came out and people wanted to be weird so bad, <laughs> like the weirdness after Tyler, the creator came out and it's like acceptable to be weird. You started seeing even more and more weird stuff. So I'm guessing since I wasn't born around the time, it was like people wanted to be different or like hit that punk rock or individuality at the time. So I don't know if it compares to 
the Tyler, the creator time. But I know growing up around that time, like people were more accepting being weird. They wanted to show like, oh, I like to do this. And Doc so Martens what? Embraced you know? the movement, and they became firmly laced into the very fabric of this cultural moment that epitomized counterculture and defiance. No, John, they look like thug boots. They're awful. I don't like them. Come on, Mom, you promised me. One iconic moment encapsulated this marriage of music and boots was with Pete Townsend doing his scissor kick performance in 1967, wearing his 8 eye Doc Martens, a visual metaphor for the height of the punk revolution. He was the dude that started it all. And from the research I've done, he said um, he put him on to protect his feet because he was slamming guitars and everything. But I feel like with this, I mean, they have missed some points so that they can keep the story going. But it's quite interesting. Uh, can you imagine a guitarist doing it to protect his feet because he was slamming guitars and just being radical at the time, but now it's very common and slowly but surely on the stage. band grew. These boots and the punk movement were like a pair of well-worn companions stamping their mark on a transformative era. Doc Martens were more than just a boot. They were a symbol of rebellion and individuality that resonated deeply with the anti-establishment underground movement. This connection propelled their rise, culminating in the 1980s with a staggering 10 million pairs sold annually. Being a part of cool cultural rebellions is awesome, but it has its downsides. When you're fighting for human rights and being sported at music festivals, Festivals, that's awesome. But the thing is, Doc Martens really had no control about where the movement would take their boots next. And eventually they found themselves in a lot of controversy. What will you learn? That your actions have consequences! Counterculture movements became increasingly edgy. The skinhead movement in particular grew violent and controversial, and these boots were sometimes employed as makeshift weapons in clashes with the police, who, ironically enough, were also wearing Doc Martens at the time. It was a rocky period in the brand's history, but it wasn't just oh, wow. controversy. They also <laughs> simply became the victims of an evolving fashion industry as well. The next generation of youth, your boy, me, millennials, weren't really in. Yeah, that is so true. When it comes to uh, like the brand culture or what your brand is for, depending on what happens, it can make or break your, your brand. Uh, I've also heard that Doc Martens were getting banned in certain schools and things like that. So it's quite interesting to see just how it evolved. And then I kind of knew like police officers had it, but I didn't think like, oh, the I guess it's like the bad guys had it or the potential bad guys and then the police officers had it too. It's like, for example, don't you know, like fast cars? It's like if a police chase happens, usually a police car is fast. But imagine if the bad guy has a fast car. I don't know. This is quite interesting to me. To grunge aesthetics. And by the time I was in high school, nobody I knew was wearing Doc no, Martens. No. Instead of practical leather boots with real footbeds and laces, we were wearing skate shoes. Does anybody remember skate shoes? Like the thick tongue DC skate shoes that even yeah, if you laced them up to 100% of the tightness available, they still flew off your feet if you tried to run anywhere. My dad hated those shoes with a yeah. passion. And now I agree. I literally barely were skate. I like, I was not a big fan of skate shoes. Like I didn't like the big chunky, like I'm not a skater. So at the time, probably the most I did that was kind of skatey was rock some, um, what are they called? The, um, Chuck Taylors, I mean, I like those, but those are like way different. Like the DC times, crazy. Like I'm trying to think of how people even style those because you could only put your pants, you can't put them over it unless you have like some wide leg. No, those times for me personally, not the best style time, fashion time. Agree with him because I'm 30 and also a dad now. This once robust company faced a severe decline with Airwear International witnessing a staggering plummet in revenue from a lofty 412 million in 1999 to a mere shadow of itself at 127 million in 2006. It was around this time that they considered full blown bankruptcy. The brand had no choice to adapt or fade away into nothing. And to weather the storm, the company was forced to make drastic decisions. And they did something that I'm sure all of you are seeing coming. They cut a thousand jobs from their UK workforce and moved all of their manufacturing to China and Thailand. How could you do this to me? Question mark. Now we gotta understand, socially at this point, the brand was already in shambles, but the move overseas, while potentially economically beneficial, severed the brand from the roots that made it the brand that it was to begin with. But hold on for a minute. If you're a semi-fashionable person today, you've probably noticed that docs are kind of back, albeit in a completely different way. We are back, baby. Doc Martens continued. Our docs back? Like, I thought, well, he said kind of. I mean, so from what I'm getting from this is like, Yes, they have made a resurgence because they almost went bankrupt. They went to China. And then nowadays, it's like you kind of do see docs around a lot. Like, you know, whenever I'm walking around, I do notice people 
and I used to, you know, compliment people like, you know, like how the Jeeps, people that have Jeeps, they usually do, there's a Jeep wave and everything. I used to try to do that with Doc Martens. And then I realized like, there's a lot of boots that look very similar to Doc Martens that are not Doc Martens. And once or twice I did compliment a couple people that, oh, nice Docs. And then they looked at me like, who's Docs or what's Docs? And I'm like, Ooh, I'm sorry. But yeah, back to the to struggle for a number of years, eventually hitting rock bottom, despite all of their attempts to salvage the company. At this point, they were forced to sell and got bought out by fashion mega brand Premira. Premira understood that this company still had a legacy that most millennials and Gen Z shoppers would be drawn to. They sold so they started out. shaking things up, experimenting with various like models, and jumping the into surprising they, partnerships right. for this brand traditionally. And we're going to get into those in a second. But Premira isn't stupid. They knew that in some ways they had to harken back to the roots of this famous company, right? So with all of the social challenges happening in the late 2010s, whatever those might have been, the brand attempted to put themselves into a social justice position reviving the energy that might have existed back for them in the glory days. Doc Martens were suddenly on a journey towards sustainability and inclusivity. In 2019, they introduced a game-changing vegan line replacing traditional leather with a synthetic animal-friendly material, which was basically plastic. And it also happened to be conveniently cheaper than real leather, which helped them a lot, I'm sure. And this tangible shift won them a PETA fashion award that year. I did not year. know that now, was 2019. Now this actually kind of worked I mean, in a lot of ways. Their some people are with the vegan, some people are not. Subcultures who passionately identified <laughs> I with have the no vegan dog movement. in the fight. And the results were so. astounding. Online sales soared by two thirds, reaching a staggering 72.7 million pounds. This accounted for a remarkable 16% of the company's total revenues. In 2021, they launched a sustainable made in England shoe line, specifically targeting a new generation of eco-conscious kids who valued environmental responsibility. So you could say that today, the Doc Martens rebrand is in full swing. But unlike the grassroots movement that built them in the beginning, the new word of mouth happened as it always does today, through influencers. Self-righteous, self-involved, hypocritical, decent hair, good looking, but terrible This was 2021? They're I'm confused. Worst. That's why you should support our channel instead of those other influencers. What? I thought the <laughs> Made in England Patreon, was... Give us money every single month I'm so confused. we can keep dunking on other influencers. Well, let's just That's continue. That's what you should do. All jokes aside, we do have a Patreon. It is a fun place. We do a podcast there every single month and we answer your questions and it's a great way for you to interact with us if that's of interest to you. Doc Martens chose to go really right to the top. They punched into a new echelon of style with A-list celebrities like Kirsten Stewart, Dakota Johnson, Hailey Bieber, and Bella Hadid, proudly getting them to flaunt their revamped boots on the red carpet. And with this move, it pretty well was the shift from a symbol of defiance to a high fashion runway icon. Another way that Doc Martens managed to maintain relevance in this time was through appealing to youth specifically. They released all kinds of sandals and styles that didn't really before fit the brand name, like lots of platform shoes for some reason. If you go on their website, they've actually got a whole section dedicated to collaborations that they've done in the past, working alongside brands like Supreme, Lazy Oaf, Senrio, and other companies that I probably don't recognize. Now, while there isn't anything inherently wrong with partnering with Hello Kitty to make Doc platform sandals, it does Makes say a sense. lot about Makes where sense. this brand's new direction is going. And here's the thing. It works. If you just look at the numbers, this was a really smart move. The new Doc Martin brand pivot was met with a resounding success. In 2021, they hit record high sales figures, selling an impressive 12.7 million pairs. And this trend continued to surge with 14 million pairs in 2022. But the thing is, even if Doc Martin's got their groove back financially, they aren't the sturdy punk boot that they once were. You remember that part of this video where we said that they moved their production to China and Thailand to save the company? Well, as the company began to return to the cultural front lines, longtime consumers started to notice that they weren't the boots from the past. The made in China models, although more affordable, often failed to live up to the reputation established by their made in England predecessors. The quality of the leather, once renowned for its sturdiness, appears to have suffered. Customers reported that the new boots oh, lack wow. the same kind of durability, frequently showing signs of wear and tear much faster than the ones that they had owned okay. earlier in their lives. Stitching and construction issues became more prevalent, leaving some longtime Doc Martens fans super disheartened. You can see all of those tiny violin stories on Reddit if you really want to go on a deep dive. But it's not just the construction that was pissing people off. It's like the whole vibe and energy of Doc Martens changed. There's a lot of stories of how Doc Martens has changed the way that it interacts with its community. One of Doc's biggest resellers, AG Meek, had to explain to its older customers that after 30 years of selling these boots, they were asked to stop because, I quote, we no longer feel the Doc Martens brand sits comfortably alongside your offerings and the other brands that you sell. Doc Martens has also faced backlash from a tweet that was sent out in 2022 that claims that Doc's used this person's shoe design without compensation or credit to the original artist. Apparently, they offered the person true, to come around true. to the head I've office to look at some shoes as compensation for the whole ordeal or whatever. Bear in mind, this is a story on the internet, take it with a grain of salt, but it does sort of lead to this entitlement that this legacy brand has now sort of adopted. Doc Martens were celebrated for their craftsmanship and their longevity, which had earned them a devoted following. Their story was about doing the right thing in the face of pressure and adversity, and yet when things got tough, they sold out to save their own ass. Wow. And sadly, what is left today is the idea of what Docs once were. 
We crave the kind of revolution and cohesion that docs were a part of. And the people who are promoting this boot today know that. Okay, so we have kind of ruined one of the most legendary boot companies in the world. But do not do not despair quite yet. We Weird. have some options for you. Not surprised. You can still indulge in the nostalgia of the made in England version. However, while it is assembled in England, uh, a lot of the materials are sourced from other places around the world, including Asia. The only way to get that authentic docs experience is if you find an old pair thrifted at a thrift store. But hold on, because there is one company left trying to fulfill the Doc Martin dreams that have been dashed, and that is Solo Bear. Back in the day, this company had the green light to produce Doc Martens until the 90s. They've been quietly holding on to the air shoe design, and they've still been making them right there in jolly old England. I don't know if that accent was right. Now there's no place like London. Bruh. And here's the kicker. They are cheaper than the made in England versions of Doc Martens. They have gone the extra mile by sourcing their leather in England. And here is the piece de resistance. Their boots are super easy to maintain and repair with soles available right on their website. Solovare stands as a testament to staying true to both style and substance. I mean, heck, you might even see me out there sporting a pair of them myself. So hopefully that silver lining made this whole video worth it. If you did enjoy it, remember to like. I actually like Solovare. Like, like Solovare. I'm not going to hate on them. I like what they're doing. I like the competition. I feel like Solovare, they definitely fill a void. Like if you really want like some sturdy, durable, durable boots, Solo Vare, I like them. The ones that I do have, uh, I want some more Solo Vares for some reason. But Solo Vares, they don't ring on YouTube. Like, <sighs> I don't know what to do. Like, Solo Vares, I really like them. I mean, I like my Doc Martens that I do have. The only thing that I would say, I definitely can tell a difference. Like, my 1460s, the Made in Englands, those ones, I mean, they're okay, but... The solo bears, yeah, I feel like they're going to last a while. Literally, I've had them for less than my um, my Made in England. And I feel like I can go to the moon and back with my solo bears. Like, that's how good they are. Great video, great video, great video. Like, I felt like their video, they did a lot. I mean, they just went from punk to modern time i mean i know they're trying to make the video as good and as catchable as possible but they miss like so many different errors and like so many different changes in the doc martin scene and i mean i get the point of the video it was the rise and the fall but yeah it was a good video i mean i do feel like doc martins i mean i haven't had any like I call them legacy Doc Martens, the ones that people have had for a long, long time or the ones that they're used to, those durable boots. But yes, I can see or I have seen a lot of people online complain that Doc Martens, like the durability is not the same anymore or they wish it was more durable. But people keep buying it because what Doc Martin is doing is changing me personally. This is what I think. It's being more flashy. It's like something that you want to get, you know? It's something like, for example, we know Nike or Nike for the Mandem, yeah? So um, Nike, they'll have so many colorways of like, let's say Jordans or a popular shoes. They'll have so many different types of it. And I feel like Doc Martens has kind of take that script to make sure like they're company or the brand just keeps running because nowadays you see a lot of people getting doc martens even though yes there's a decrease in quality and things like that hopefully they change hopefully they're like okay we need to look into it but at the end of the day i do feel like doc martens i mean they do have their how should i say their place in the market you know i do feel like the boots since the quality has gone down why won't the price go down a little bit? I feel like the price just keeps going up and up and up, which is a big thing for me. I mean, and then my biggest thing, he did say that at the end is just like the resole of the boots. Like once it's messed up, it's messed up. It's hard for cobblers to take off the old one and put on some new soles in them, which makes it so difficult. And why do they want to make our lives harder is the biggest thing. And then please, please, Doc Martens, please have sizes. Like, I understand you guys have this legacy thing, but like, if you guys are going to change something, I would think half sizes will be one of the biggest things that you guys really look into to change and implement. Hey, what do you guys think? Let me know.